friends, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of an A-line skirt with flounce. I've done two previous videos on how to pattern a flounce and how to pattern an A-line skirt and I thought it might be useful to mash those two things up and show the stitching. So if you're interested in seeing that then let's get started. So starting with the fabric, I'm using this viscose twill fabric I got from the textile centre. It is super floaty but has a little bit more body than just your standard viscose so I really liked it. And on to the cutting out. So this is my front, my fabric underneath is on the fold. I have one notch at my zip on the left hand side and a notch at the centre on the fold, both top and bottom. Exactly the same thing for the back. So fabric is on the fold underneath, a notch for the zip and a notch just at the fold line at the top and bottom of the skirt. And those notches at the centre will help me to locate the facing and the flounce later on. And of course the zip notch will help me locate the zip. So on to the facing pieces. These ones also are cut on the fold. And I have the corresponding notches on these pieces as well, so just at the top and bottom of the facing at the fold line. And then on to the flanks. Exactly the same thing here again. Both flanks pieces, front and back, are cut on the fold. I have a notch at the center at the fold line on both pieces. And I mentioned in the intro, I've done a video on how to make a pattern for a flounce. I've also done a video on how to make the A-line skirt pattern, so I shall leave those both linked below. And this is where I am, so I have my facing front and back, my skirt front and back, and my flounce front and back. And now I'm ready to stitch. So I have my front skirt on top of my back, right sides together, and I'm ready to stitch my side seams. So starting with the right hand side, I'm back stitching at the start, sticking to my one centimetre seam allowance the whole way down, back stitching at the end, and that's how that looks. And you can see here I've just finished my raw edges of my side seams on the overlocker. And then on to the other side, so this is where my zip is going to be, so I'm back stitching just at the bottom of the zip, so at the notch you seen me place earlier. Sewing up my one centimetre down to the hem. So that's where my zip will be. There's my back stitches and my seam line the whole way down to the hem. Back stitching at the hem. And now I've just went ahead and pressed both of those seams open. I've pressed open where my zip is going to be as well, so I've just pressed that over my one centimeter seam allowance. And now on to the facing. So I finished my side seam edges on both facing front and back and then I've just placed some interfacing on both of those and now I'm ready to stitch up just the right hand side only. I want to leave the zip side open, back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks. And now I just want to finish that raw edge at the bottom so just running that through the overlocker and then I've pressed open that seam that I've just sewn and that's my facing ready to be placed on my skirt. But before I do that, I just want to start on the flounce. So I finished the side seams of both front and back flounce on the overlocker and now I want to stitch at my one centimetre seam allowance both sides. So back stitching at the start, sticking to my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way down, back stitching at the end, and that's how that looks. And just like I did on the facing, I want to finish that bottom edge. So I've pressed open both of those seams and then I've ran the bottom edge through the overlocker and then I've pressed up that seam at the bottom edge just by the width of the overlock stitches. I find with viscose fabrics this is a nice simple basic finish that looks really nice on the outside. So just pinning the flounce here to the bottom of the skirt, making sure I'm lining up those notches that I placed at all of my fold lines, lining up my side seams 
and then just distributing some further pins in between the originals. So that will just help for everything to be nice and accurate when I go to sew. So back stitching at the start, sticking to my one centimeter seam allowance. And here I'm really trying to be super accurate because this will affect how the flounce actually sits on the outside. So I think I've managed to stick to my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way around. And now I'm ready to place that facing. So just lining up my side seams, popping in a pin there and then pinning the whole way around, like so. And then to the machine to stitch at my one centimeter seam allowance. And just like all of the previous seams, back stitching at the start and the end. And that's how that looks. And now I just want to trim that seam allowance back. So I'm going to trim it back by about two thirds and then going to press it to the right hand side and stitch directly on top. And this will help to prevent the facing from rolling to the outside of this little skirt. So I'm stitching here only about one or two millimeters away from the facing skirt seam. And as I say, directly on top of that seam on the inside. So you'll see that here in a second. Just like that. And now to finish the hem. So you've seen earlier that I had overlocked that bottom edge and pressed up just the, by the width of the overlock stitches. So I'm just sewing directly on top of that, trying to catch those stitches in underneath just on their edge. I've used a little bit of a longer stitch length. And you can see here, I've just caught those stitches. So super pleased with that. So this is how I'm looking so far. So I finished that seam on the overlocker between the skirt and the flounce. My facing is all in place. Nicely understitched. And now I'm ready to pop my zip in. So I've just popped some interfacing along that seam on both sides. I then hand tacked that side seam in place and then pop my zip directly on top of the seam I'd tacked and tack that in place. So I'm now ready to stitch. So back stitching at the top of the zip and I've butted my foot up alongside the teeth of the zipper and that will help me maintain that nicely spaced distance between the teeth of the zip and the stitches at the side. So that will help me on both sides. So just sewing across the bottom, being really careful when I'm sewing through the teeth of the zip, taking it nice and slowly and up the other side, making sure that the foot again is butted up against the teeth of the zip. Now I just need to remove my tacking stitches and this is what I'm left with. So I really like this finish for um, just little basic skirts. It's super quick and easy to do and it's sort of feel safe as well. And now just to finish off the facing. So I fold it over the top of the zip to sandwich it in between the facing and the skirt front. And then just stitching that down. So I'm stitching directly through the stitches I've previously placed in order to put the zip on. That will just help it remain nice and neat from the outside, like so. And the inside, so super pleased with that. And then one last thing to do is just to run a couple of stitches in the ditch to hold the facing down at the other side seam. So I place my needle directly in that seam. And you can see here the stitches. And this is the skirt complete. So nicely hemmed, all the seams inside are all overlocked. So super basic finish, but totally practical. My zip is in place, my facing all nicely pressed, stitched in the ditch on the other side, done. And this is how it looks on. So this is a super, super basic little skirt but really lovely. I love these skirts for the winter for wearing with black tights, but equally brilliant for wearing in the summer, maybe in a little floral viscose. Love it. 
so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do, and I shall see you on Friday in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks!